This video is part of a series where I'm walking through common and current data scientist interview questions. Subscribe if you want to see the latest videos, and please like this video if you find this interesting or helpful so that I know that the effort I'm putting into these videos is having a positive impact. The question for this video was adopted from a question that a friend of mine got while applying for a data scientist position uh, at a big company. It's a really good question because it starts out kind of simple and then gets progressively more complicated. And at the depths of the question, um, it gets complicated in ways that most interviewees won't be expecting unless they're watching these videos. So here it is. Your interviewer invites you to play a card game. In this game, there are three cards. One is labeled with a 1, one is labeled with a 2, and one is labeled with an X. On each round, you draw a card, and if you draw the X card, then the game ends. Otherwise, the game continues. The first thing the interviewer asks is, how many rounds do you expect to play? And you, being well-versed in probability distributions, immediately realize that the number of rounds will follow a geometric distribution. And since you're drawing cards randomly from three cards, and one of those three terminates uh, this game of drawing cards, the probability parameter for this geometric will be 1 out of 3. So that's probability p. And you know that the expectation of a geometric variable is 1 over p, which here is 1 over a third, which is 3. So this kind of a question can take many forms when it comes up in an interview. The interviewer might be asking about like how many, uh, or say there's a family and they're having children until they have a boy, how many kids are they expected to have? You might be asked something like there's uh, cups, like three cups that are face down over some object, and you have to pick the cup that is hiding the object, and the cups get shuffled each time between your choices. The point is that geometric distributions come up a lot during interviews, so being able to spot when a problem has a form that conforms to a geometric distribution uh, will get you past this first part of questions like this really quickly, and it'll get you onto the second part. Now there's a bonus. As you play, the number on the card that you draw reflects the number of dollars that you win on each round. Again, you get to play the game until you draw the X card. And this time the interviewer is asking, what are your expected winnings? So I would encourage you to take a minute to kind of pause the video here and try to think about how you would go about answering this question. And then after thinking about it for a couple minutes, uh, you can check back and see how I go through this. So the setup for this problem is that you're in this sort of system where a third of the time um, the game ends and you win nothing on this round because you drew the X card. And another third of the time you win one dollar because you drew the one card and then you return to the game. And a final third of the time you win two dollars because you drew the two card and then you return to the game to draw something on the next round. So from here, there's a few different ways to solve this problem. The quickest and most efficient is simply taking the expected number of rounds and multiplying it by the number of winnings on each round. So here, the expected number of rounds is still 3, which we found in the earlier problem. And now the expected winnings is a third times zero, because a third of the time you choose this card, plus a third times one, because a third of the time you choose the one card, plus a third times two, which works out to one. That's three over three. So the expected number of rounds, three times expected number of winnings, one, will be three dollars in the end. So the thing that makes this problem a little bit trickier is understanding that the expected number of winnings um, is now depends on these uh, values 1 and 2, which are the values that you get when you draw each card. And also realizing that you can kind of solve this in a very simple way by just multiplying the number of rounds times the expected number of winnings. So now you've gotten past that first initial question, which was kind of easy, and the second follow-up, which is a little bit more difficult, you're starting to feel really good about yourself and the interviewer surprises you with another question. Now the interviewer says that they're going to add two X cards and add one two card to the deck, and asks what are the expected winnings now that you're playing with this new deck. 
so again, I encourage you to take a couple seconds to try and think about how you would solve this problem. And after you've thought about it for a little bit, uh, unpause the video and see how I walk through it. So we're still in some initial state where we can draw the x card and win nothing. Or we could draw the one card and win a dollar. Or we could draw the two card. But what's different is now there's three x cards and two two cards. And there's still only one one card. Uh, so when you incorporate this information, the probability of choosing the x is now three out of six. The probability of choosing a one becomes one out of six. And the probability of choosing the two becomes two out of six. Still with this kind of setup, the solution from uh, the earlier question will work, where we just figure out the expected number of rounds and multiply it by the expected number of winnings on each round. But for the expected number of rounds, the only thing that matters is uh, the probability of choosing this card that ends the process, which is now 3 out of 6. So now expected number of rounds. is 1 over 3 out of 6, which ends up being 2. And the expected winnings per round is 3 6 times 0, plus 1 6 times 1, plus 2 6 times 2, which works out to 5 6. So expected number of rounds is 2. Expected winnings per round is 5 6. Multiply them together, and the expected winnings uh, for this game overall would be 5 thirds. So now I'm going to give a quick recap and kind of reveal the underlying structure of this type of a problem. So in these problems, there's some kind of game state that you're in, there's some probability that that game state ends, and some value you get when that game state ends. There's also some probability um, that you get another value and that the game continues and some probability, call it n because this could be extended somewhat indefinitely, that you get other values uh, and return to the initial game state. And since this ends the process, the expected uh, number of rounds is 1 over that probability that the process ends. And then within any round, the expected winnings is found with an expectation formula um, where you sum up the probability of the value of an outcome times the value of that outcome over all outcomes. And then what you're expected to win from the whole game, so this is winnings per round, and expected winnings overall uh, can be found by multiplying the expected number of rounds by the expected winnings per round. Okay, so this is all pretty nice, and now you've got a general framework for solving these types of problems, which can come up in many different forms uh, in an actual interview. These questions, while a little bit complicated, were kind of standard. The next two directions that this question could go are things that will probably trip up a person um, if they're not expecting them. So by preparing for them and watching the next couple of videos that I release, you'll have a leg up over the people who aren't watching these videos. Good luck!